Here's a quick rundown of the synthesizer as it stands at the moment. So I bring in MIDI uh, pitch control from my keyboard, my MIDI keyboard here. Um, the MIDI note value gets uh, translated from a MIDI number to a frequency in Hertz. That goes to my complex waveform oscillator. The oscillator signal runs through a filter. My filter is being controlled by a uh, kind of weird LFO effect. That goes to the amplifier. And then when I turned on the audio, we hear it. Okay, so I can control my notes. But there's something strange happening. Well, not strange so much as there's not really much happening. Um, aside from the LFO kind of squelching the filter, I've just got a drone. I can change the pitch, but ultimately the note stays on. So we end up with this drone. And that's not really what we kind of expect when we play a synthesizer. We expect the note to sound when we press the key on the on the keyboard, okay? So if I press the key now, when I'm not pressing anything, we kind of expect the note to stop, but that's not happening at the moment. And the reason for that is the amplifier down here, this, this last, um, like modifier element of the signal chain is just staying on the whole time, okay? The amplifier is open. If we thought of it like a gate, the gate is constantly open and therefore signal is just running through it the whole time. So what we're going to use today is we're going to use envelopes as a way of um, carefully opening and closing that gate, that signal, that amplifier, in order to shape notes, okay? So we want a note to come on when we press a key, or we trigger it and we want it to close, we want the note to end when we stop playing that key. So, let's lose this for now. And I've just opened a new blank window. So we're just gonna work through the kind of uh, very, very simple skeleton of how an envelope works and how we can use it to control an amplifier. And then we'll start to build that into something um, more useful for our synthesizer. So I'm gonna start by generating a little uh, sine wave oscillator just playing at 220 hertz and I'm going to hook that up to a signal uh, multiplier or an amplifier and I'm just going to say set it to half volume so set it to 0.5 so that it doesn't overload our headphones and then we'll hook it up to our easy DAC uh, audio output and there we go so I have a note okay so this is kind of like the um, model of our synthesizer so far okay so our note just plays the whole time and it doesn't turn on or off or anything like that. Now, what we can do, just as an example, is you we know already that we can control the amplifier just by changing what we're multiplying by, okay? So at the moment, if I multiply by zero, I'm shutting off all the signal and I can slowly turn it up or down like this. Uh, there's also objects like the gain slider, which is going to do this for me. So if I just cut this out for the time being, I can plug this in here. So I could use that, but just for the time being, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use this. Now, we saw in the LFO video that I used an LFO at one point to control this and fluctuate this. Now, that's just automatic, okay? So as long as that LFO oscillator is running, the signal is just going to fluctuate on the on the on the amplifier. So that's not really going to work. We want something that we can control, either by playing a MIDI keyboard or in this case, I'm just going to trigger it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, create a metronome actually. So I've got a little toggle button here. I'm going to create a new uh, metro object. Uh, so this is a metronome and it takes an argument in milliseconds. So I'm going to say every 1000 milliseconds or every second, this is going to output um, a bang. Okay, so we can just see this here. If I turn this on now, we'll see that little button light up every second. Now, what I want to do is I want to generate a ramp to turn this up or down every second. Okay, now you might remember from uh, one of the earlier videos, we used this line object. Okay, it generates a linear ramp, it's a linear ramp generator. Okay, so I'm going to create this, and this outputs a signal. 
which is going to run a oh, bit loud I'll turn that off for the time being that's um, when it's hooked up properly that's going to generate a, a ramped signal from whatever value I tell it to to another value so we can use this to turn up and down um, the amplifier whenever we trigger it by the metronome but to do that we need to know the kind of right um, information to tell it so I'm going to open the uh, help file for this and it gives us a few examples okay so it tells us that the um, integer or float received in the left inlet sets the value immediately unless there's a time target um, for a new value that has been received in the right inlet so essentially what it's going to say is if you tell it a specific time to take like a speed to move at in the right inlet then it will move to that value over that time so let's see we can use that in some instances but that's not going to help us right now because at the moment we're just triggering it okay so every time the metronome triggers we need it to do this thing now if we look up here there's a list input a common way to generate a ramp set initial value followed by a list with a new value and a target time so what we can do is we can actually express um, we can give it a whole message that describes an envelope okay it describes how we're going to open that signal and then close that signal so here's how it works I create a message so I use the M shortcut key I'm going to say 0 comma 1 actually let's say 0 0.5 so what that's saying is start at a value of 0 and then move to a value of 0 0.5 over let's say 10 milliseconds okay so that's how that works start value goal value duration okay so start at zero move to 0 0.5 over 10 milliseconds and then we'll move back to zero over 100 milliseconds okay now I'm gonna hook that up here and then every time I trigger it through this metronome it should generate a kind of envelope so it's going to basically make a spike so um, let's see if I do it the right way around for you so it's going to go wait no like that okay so up to 0 0.5 over 10 milliseconds back down to 0 over 100 milliseconds so we're going to end up with this kind of shape a short attack and a slightly longer decay so let's turn on the audio and see what we've got there we go so this little chirp this little metronome that we've created we can change some of these arguments if we want so let's say we wanted a longer tail okay so we want to come in attack at 10 milliseconds and decay at 500 milliseconds or let's say we want this to be a triangle with a slow attack and a slow decay so I could bring it in over 500 milliseconds and then fade it back out over 500 milliseconds okay so now we kind of have notes uh, this could be very very short a simple envelope okay and that's all an envelope is so let's just hook up a scope and you can see this to get a better idea okay so now you can see that waveform being shaped that's that tail so if I brought this up again let's say to 50 milliseconds you see that there's a bit more of a lag on that um, attack so the line object is a really really quick really simple way of generating um, generating notes but it has a problem okay so let's just turn this off for the moment let's say um, let's bring in our let's bring in our MIDI keyboard okay so note in and note in is going to give us a MIDI note number here which we can change with M2F So you can see the note number as I play my keyboard, which is down here. Now we could hook this, hook this up. Uh, 
there's a slight problem here in that any time I, you might remember this, you might have seen this before, but if I press a note down, that triggers a note, and then when I let go of the key, that triggers another note, which is slightly confusing to play. Um, we can get around this with what's called a strip note. So that's going to take a pitch in, and it's going to take a velocity in, and then it will just output uh, a note on, note on, note off message. So, so we can use this now. So that solves one problem, but there's still a bigger problem, which is all of our notes are the same duration, regardless of if I do hold the key down. We would expect that note to hold for as long as I'm holding this key, and it's not. It's just staying at 50 milliseconds plus 500 milliseconds for the attack and the decay. So what we want is we want something that will work with our interface, our controller, our MIDI keyboard to generate um, more useful notes. So to do that, we have to look at a different way of approaching envelopes. Okay, so here's my um, oscillator, my simple sine wave oscillator hooked up to a MIDI keyboard in. So I've got my keyboard control, um, and so that's running same as before, MIDI note into M2F converted to frequency in Hertz, then to my oscillator. So um, before we kind of get started here, one thing to note is that this is getting a little bit busy and not all of this information is totally necessary. So it's starting to clutter things up. So what I'm gonna just do here is I'm just gonna encapsulate this. So I've um, selected these objects and I'm gonna hit Command, Shift and E. And that's just gonna create a little sub patch. So I just know that this is um, my MIDI to frequency. Uh, so I'm just gonna give it a little helpful name and then that just keeps it out of the way. So it's, it's giving me a little bit more space here. So I've got my oscillator, my simple oscillator, and now we want to try and find a way of generating an envelope to control the, the amplifier, the amplitude of our sound um, that responds to the MIDI keyboard. So it's a bit more musical and a bit more useful. Now, if I press a key on my keyboard, Take note of this. This is the MIDI note velocity of our note coming in. So as I press a key, notice that the velocity goes up while I'm holding a note down. And then when I let go of the note, it goes back to zero. Okay, so this is a MIDI note on, note off. So when the MIDI note comes on, when I press the key down, we get a velocity, which is a bit like a MIDI version of amplitude or volume, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna use that value to control an envelope, okay? So while we're holding that note down, the envelope stays open, the signal comes through, the amplifier is working. And then when I take my finger off the key, the MIDI note off message is sent, so the, the note closes, I want the envelope to close and, and, and the signal to close with it. So to do that, I'm gonna use um, an object in Max called ADSR. Now this is an ADSR envelope generator. ADSR, if you're not familiar, stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release, okay? So from the moment that I press the, press the key down, that's our attack the time it takes to reach the peak. Then there's a slight decay, then there's a sustain phase, and then there's a release, okay? So this is essentially describing how, um, how the envelope is going to work. Now, um, a thing to note is that um, some of these values are some of these values are, are, in, are in different values. So some of them are in sort of milliseconds and some of them aren't. So what I'm gonna just do is I'm gonna open the help file and that's gonna show us what we've got here. So just an example would be um, a 10 millisecond attack, a 100 millisecond decay, a 0 0.8 um, gain. So that's between values of zero and one and then a 1000 milliseconds or one second release time, okay? Um, the other thing to notice about this is the way that it's triggered, okay? We can't trigger our envelope with a bang because that would be useless for holding down the note, okay? So instead, 
what it needs to, to take is it's going to take a message of one, and that's start the envelope. So one finger goes down, key starts, note comes on. And then when the note off is, is sent, when I release the key, that's going to send a message of zero. And that's going to tell the ADSR to start releasing the envelope. OK, so let's just um, put in these default values to start with and, and then try that. So 10, 100, 0 0.8 and 1000. So I'm just going to type these in. 10 uh, milliseconds in uh, decay, 0 0.8 gain for the sustain, and 1000 millisecond release. Now, what I need to do is I need to turn this into a one message for note on and a zero message for note off. So to do that, I'm going to use this cell object. Um, now, the way cell works is if I pass it this number, if the number equals zero, it will send a message out here. It will bang out of here. So bang if input matches zero. Anything else, so any other number, whether it's 87 or 41, will trigger a bang here. So what I can do is I can hook those up to just static messages. So I can say if the value is zero, send this note off, this is zero. And if the value is one, send this note on. And what that will now do, um, let's see if I hook it up to a number tilde object. So note on, you see we go up to 0 0.8, that gain specified here. I'm still holding the note, so check up here. And now as I let go of this, uh, of this note, you'll see slowly over the course of 1000 milliseconds, this number will slowly ramp down to zero, a lot like the line object. So I'm gonna let go now, and we generate this ramp down. Okay, so what I can do now is all I have to do is hook this up, and my note is closed, I'm sending zero, and now, So I have notes. I can hold notes and play them on a keyboard. Um, and this is, you know, this is this makes things a lot more kind of musical. Uh, one thing that we could do um, is we could kind of hook up some numbers to this. So just a bunch of integer numbers. So that's the release time. I want the decay time and I want the attack. We, we can change the, the gain differently. So just now I can say, let's say we want a slower note. So let's say we want a thousand milliseconds attack, um, a hundred for the decay, and then a thousand for the tail. So now I should get a sort of slow fading in note and a slow fading out note. So we get something, we can really shape the amplitude envelope of our sound using this ADSR. Okay. But in doing so, we've encountered another problem. And maybe you've known this all along, but this is a monophonic synth. Okay, this is only capable of producing one voice at a time, one note at a time. So if I try to play a chord right now on my MIDI keyboard, the keyboard gets a bit confused because it can only play one note at a time. So if I mash all the keys, it doesn't really know what to do. Um, that's something that we're going to look at in the future. We're going to look at um, making a polyphonic synthesizer, and ADSR is, is going to be a, a really important role in doing that. But for now, um, have a little play around with ADSR. Um, see if you can come up with some other user interface things. Maybe you could hook this up to a multi-slider so that you can change some of these values. Um, Maybe you could trigger this um, in a different way. Maybe you could hook this up to a kind of random number generator to set random decay and attack times. Have some fun with it, play around, and um, get used to using your kind of MIDI keyboard to controller to be able to play these notes and, and play something in a more musical way. So we've looked at the line um, object as a way of quickly generating ramps values. Um, and now we've looked at the ADSR to cre create a more kind of nuanced um, and, and musical envelope. Enjoy. <laughs>